last month. Easy to see why. Offense averaging nearly six runs a game, getting big hits at just the right time. Perhaps the most reliable pitching staff in the league, anchored by a shutdown closer. Improved defense all over the diamond, finding ways to keep opponents off base. Tonight they look for more of the same against the Cubs and a ninth straight series win. The tarp was on, then it was off. Then it was on, they took it back off. Had to put it on one more time. Crazy Chicago weather. Curly W's on the road. Cheering on the Nats game two and a chance to win another series with a win here tonight. Tarp is off. It's, I mean, it looks like paradise in Chicago right now as we get ready for game two. Bob and FP. The thing that I love about this ball club right now, you know, and they've won eight of nine and 20 out of 25, but they're finding ways to win. No matter what kind of game it is, you might win eight to six, but like last night, two to one. Yeah, you want to slug those slug, but in the close games, they're doing all the little things. They're getting bumped down. They're they're taking the extra base. The situational hitting's been great. The defense, as we showed you last night, has been great. Pitching, relief pitching. I mean, you name it. And the old cliche of everybody contributing. We talked about a lot during the broadcast yesterday. You know, a lot of talk about Bryce Harper and what he's done early in this season, but it's been a collective 25-man effort. The bench has been good. So it's fun to watch them go right now. They're playing as good as anybody. And by the way, those one-run games, the Nats are 10 and 4 this year in games decided by just one. The closer, if you do all those things right for eight innings, and then you got a guy who can't get the last three outs, that's a real problem. It's not a problem for this ball club right now. Well, I, I know Drew probably doesn't want to hear this, but there's been times in his career when he's a, kind of an excitable closer, when he's let things that go wrong behind him kind of affect him. He gets going a little too fast, and then the wheels fall off. That was in his younger days, maybe 2012. The 2015 version of Drew Storn, he hits a batter, so what? He's got a big slugger up there, so what? A seeing eye base hit, a broken bat base hit, so what? But he knows that his stuff is good. He trusts his stuff. And like we always say, Bryce Harper is growing up in front of our eyes. We're seeing Drew Storm this year grow up right in front of our eyes. He is the mature version of a closer. And, and look at the numbers. I mean, they bear out exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, the recent trending numbers, 15 saves now, first in the National League. 81 career, by the way. And his ERA overall, 0.89. The National League hitting 181 against our closer, who looks like he's on that just the doorstep of being a superstar type ninth inning guy. Jordan Zimmerman has only beaten the Cubs once in his career, never here at Wrigley Field. What does he do to turn that thing around tonight? Well, that's a great question. It, it, the Cubs are second all of baseball, seeing four pitches per plate appearance. So a, a team that generally works pitchers is facing Jordan Zimmerman, and we've seen teams in the past come up and hack off Jordan Zimmerman, not get into account. So it's going to be imperative for Jordan to get ahead in the count. I think the Cubs are going to change their game plan tonight. They're going to come out swinging. So he has to hit his spots early in the count. The wind's blowing out at Wrigley. This could be a very offensive night. Last two times out at San Diego and at home against the Yankees. 2-0 in 13 innings, two runs, 12 strikeouts. So Jordan looking for win number five. But again, 0-3 career at Wrigley. Time to take care of that tonight.
Every swing, every play Bryce Harper has made this year for your enjoyment right there. Nats, Cubs, we're delayed because it rained really hard here about a half hour before the ball game. Tarp is off. It looks beautiful. So let's talk about Bryce Harper and Chris Bryant, two young stars in this game, guys who know each other from their youth in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, the new guy appears to be the real deal as well. Yeah, he is. 4.26 pitches per plate appearance. That's third in the National League. So Chris Bryant, a guy that's going to make you work. We already know that Bryce Harper is a guy that's going to make you work, leading the league in walks. So two on-base percentage guys, two guys with pop. We saw the pop from Chris Bryant yesterday. His first time up tying the game at one with the tater in the left field bleacher. So it's been fun watching these two guys go at it just for one game. But I think it's good for baseball to have young stars. And not just young stars, young stars that are playing the game the right way. Chris Bryant plays hard. Bryce Harper plays hard. And you see the graphic on these two. 485 batting average since May 9th. I mean, just Bryce on the left is ridiculous. <laughs> Chris Bryant's great, too, but the, the, the stats on the left are out of this world. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All-Star Sales Event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Opportunities on both sides of the ball for the Nats these days. The offense is there with Harper leading the way, but the defense, and I know there was a four-error game the other day. You, you throw that one out, uh, and really over the last month, the defense has been very solid. Well, you throw that game out completely, and there shouldn't have been four errors in that game if people were backing up the right bases. Some errors that shouldn't have happened happened, but when you talk about yesterday and Ian Desmond and the plays he made, why are all these plays being made all of a sudden? Well, the, the staff is pounding the strike zone. They're throwing strikes. The tempo for all the Nats starters has been fantastic, and Tanner Roark yesterday was getting the ball and throwing. So what happens when you have a guy like Roark on the mound? You're on your toes on defense. You saw the play by Michael Taylor. Bryce Harper going into the bricks hard, playing great right field like we've already talked about. And Wilson Ramos has been fantastic back there, too. So all of these guys are contributing in some way or another, and that's what good teams do. Everybody contributing, everybody playing good defense. That was not a close play at second base. Ramos, by the way, 5 for 15 this year. So 20 and 5, the errors have been cut down greatly. The fielding percentage is up. This is a ball club that's doing it in all departments. The pitchers have been good at times at getting key ground balls for double plays as well. It has become a beautiful baseball evening on the north side of Chicago. Wrigley, the Nets, the Cubs, game two, and another series to be won.
100 now. And a two and a half game lead over the Mets. By the way, Jacob DeGrom and Jerome Williams, Philadelphia at New York tonight. And the Cubs are 24 and 20. They're four and a half back of St. Louis. Four times this year, the Nats' leadoff hitters have gotten games off to great starts. Well, the Nats third in the National League with 50 home runs, and maybe it's because of their leadoff hitters. You know, Escobar, Michael Taylor. How about the Nats span a couple of times this year? There's Escobar on April 16th. That's the first time that's ever happened to Cole Hamels in his career. A first pitch home run by Yunel Escobar, don't forget. And then Denard Span May 11th at Arizona. Tater heads up in the pool. And then yesterday heads up in the new scoreboard construction workers. It's a good thing you had your helmet on. Maybe you missed it, but we showed it to you about 18 times after this. The lonely ball sat out there for about four innings before somebody finally picked it up. Some power at the top of the Nats order. Yeah, the Nats have hit 50 homers, the Reds 51, the Dodgers 60. Now, with five homers of his own and a lot of RBIs, that number five guy kind of flying under the radar a little bit, Dan Coco. He is Bob Carpenter, Ryan Zimmerman heating up offensively and defensively, obviously a position change for the former Gold Glove winning third baseman. But the Nationals have been thrilled with what Zimmerman has brought to the table defensively now that he's at first base. It can be tough for right-handed first baseman to create a throwing lane on throws to second as they try and cut down a runner and create keep the double play in order, rather. But Zimmerman's done a really good job of that. He's been aggressive on throws to the second base, and Matt Williams said today, Zimmerman knows how to come get the baseball from his time at third, and he's not afraid to get it with one hand, push through the baseball, spin, and throw. And that often creates a throwing lane for him. He's uninhibited on his throws to second from a physical perspective. He got used to that throw in spring training. And Matt said he just understands the game and how to play it. He's gotten used to all the in intricacies of first base, and the Nats have been very pleased with how he's adjusted to what can be a difficult transition, guys. He's gotten used to biting his nails, too, it looks like. Well, we've had a couple nail biters lately. <laughs> Two to one yesterday. Why not? Wilson Ramos, ninth career game winning homer against the Cubs yesterday. He hit one beautifully to right center with two outs in the sixth inning. That was so great because Tanner Roark had just come out of the game and this gave him a chance to win and the bullpen took care of that. The rest of the lineup, pretty much the regular guys. First time the Nats will face Kyle Hendricks. A fastball 89, he'll sink it, he'll cut it, he keeps it down. He has two kinds of change-ups, one that fades away from a lefty or into a righty, and one that cuts into a lefty and fades away from a righty. So you rarely don't see that. I rarely do you see that, excuse me. And this guy, watching the film before, he reminds me a lot of Doug Fister. The way he approaches it, the way he gets on top of the baseball, kind of leans to the side and gets some sink. So change-up his best secondary pitch, and he's coming off. His first complete game shutout of his career last time out against San Diego in a three to nothing win. Set the defense for the Cubs behind Hendricks. Coughlin, Fowler, Soler, the outfield. Castro, Bryant, left side. Russell, Rizzo, right side. And Miguel Montero behind the plate. Beautiful night at Wrigley. 74. The storms are gone. They're all out over the lake now, moving over to the state of Michigan. And a moment ago, I just had a, a moment here at Wrigley. I never thought I'd hear purple haze on the PA system as the starting pitcher <laughs> warmed up. It is a new look and new sounding Wrigley field. Mike DeMuro has the plate. Hunter Wendelstedt, the crew chief at first. Bob Davidson, Ryan Blackney on the bases. The batter's eye is lit up by the sun. The pitcher, the infield, and the hitter all in the shade here. It looks worse on camera than it really is. Those shadows on TV really look dark. And we're underway at 721 Washington time with ball one to Denard Span. Steps in at 360, 316 on base percentage of 354. Counts even. I mean, doesn't his delivery remind you of Doug Fister? Yep. Doug, if you're watching tonight, we miss you and we hope you're okay. Get better. Get well soon. Yeah, and Craig Stammen, too. Craig's had to watch us on TV a lot lately. <laughs> he's, he's I, I personally to. apologized <laughs> to him over the weekend. And there's an off speed pitch low and away in a pretty good location right there, one and two. Capistrano Valley High School of California, class of 08, originally drafted by Texas, came over here in the Ryan Dempster deal at the trading deadline in 2012. 25 years of age, 6'3, 190. Span. Man, that changeup had some wicked action to it for the first out. Early game notes. Ten players with ten RBIs or more. Toronto 
and Houston. A couple of good slugging clubs doing that as well. Jordan Zimmerman, most of the hits on him are singles. It's a good trend with the wind blowing out tonight. And the Cubs starters pretty good now over the last 15 days. Nats are at 3.64, fifth in the league. Cubs 3.78, number seven. And that's a strike to Ian Desmond. Ian took care of the hitting streak early with an infield hit after the span homer yesterday. It sits at 10 games. During that time, 13 for 40. Opponents hitting 284 first time through the lineup against Hendricks this year. Tried to change up away and looked like it might have gotten the corner and Mike DeMuro waved it off. So second longest hitting streak right now behind Buster Posey of the Giants. Crawford carrying his weight in San Francisco as well. That comes back. You get really stay on the backdoor sinker. From Kyle Hendricks will start it off the plate even with two strikes to right handers and run it back. He is befuddling the Nats early. They're going to try to get a good look at him here. First time around, two outs, two Ks. He could be befuddling the Nats or the backdrop, which is Sonny, could be befuddling the Nats. Whenever you take batting practice, which is usually around this time for a 7 o'clock start, it's tough to see the baseball with a shiny backdrop. And based on a, a couple of hot hitters in their swings to start this game up, I would say that's a very good chance that's the case. Here's Escobar. Hitting at 313. Right field, a tough sun field for Jorge Soler and Bryce Harper in the early part of this game. And strike one. A rare 0 for yesterday for Yunel, who's still hitting 360 over the last 19 games. Do you get the feeling that if Yunel could just walk up and hit where the cut of the grass is, he would? I mean, he, he's out of the box. He is so far up in the batter's box. And we've talked about it before, just a personal preference thing. Yeah, left foot's actually in fair territory. That got him. He didn't have to sell that too much to Mike DeMiro. And that could be important. He gets on for Bryce Harper. Could be very important anytime you extend the inning to Mr. Harper. Diving out there. He was throwing the backdoor sinker. He's trying to cover that outside pitch. You see where he leans. Bryce yesterday, a double, a walk, one for three. 26 extra base hits. With that double, ties him with Matt Carpenter and Adrian Gonzalez atop the league. Montero setting up way outside. Smattering of booze when Bryce jumped in the box right there. Maybe Cubs hand, fans still a little rattled from the overtime loss last night with the Hawks. Yeah, they almost got run out of the building in the first period and came back and tied it with a miracle rally. It's a great game. Outfield around to the left a bit. Montero out there again. He's going to snap it down there. And out at first is Escobar. Hunter Wendelstead punches him out. Bryce Harper still standing around as the Nats are going to take a look at it. You know Escobar plays umpire often. He called himself safe, but I'll say this. It can't be that close with Bryce Harper up. Even if he got back in there, it cannot be that close. Cubs and haven't left the field yet. Tough to tell. Looks like he got him. And the uh, Nats, it was kind of funny. Matt Williams gave Mike DeMuro the safe sign. That means they're accepting the out call. Nats are gone in the first.
for the achiever in you by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by Land Rover above and beyond. I think that's the America's Cup races they're having right there in the river. And he's in last place. Chicago River meanders its way through the loop area. About five, six miles south of here. Miguel Montero, we highlight him in the Cubs lineup, didn't start yesterday. But he's had a good career set of numbers against Jordan Zimmerman with a couple of RBIs, six hits. Zimmerman takes on the Cubs now for the eighth time. He's one and four. At last start, he threw the fastball 68 percent of the time, averaged 93 miles an hour, and the win with seven strong innings against the Yankees allowed two runs in the first, and that was it. Six strikeouts, one walk, 88 pitch performance. And the dynamic here tonight is a patient team. Do they swing early against Jordan Zimmerman, like we've seen a lot of ball clubs? Yeah, Jordan always throws a lot of strikes. Fouled off to the left by Dexter Fowler. 0 for 4 yesterday, 0 for his last date. The veteran hitting 251 is the Cubs' leadoff man. They have a lot of first pitch hackers in their lineup, which kind of a head scratcher for me when they've seen so many pitches. That if you missed earlier, the Cubs hitters average 4.00 pitches per plate appearance this year. That's the second best mark in all of baseball. Yeah, Rizzo's drawn 24 walks, and the early returns on Chris Bryant. Is that he's seeing about four pitchers or so per at bat too, and sometimes that's rare for a rookie who might be a little over amped at times. All right. I probably could have just said four instead of four point oh oh. Two two. That's a high fly ball. There's a lot of wind here tonight, and it's going to blow that out of here. And the Cubs need one point oh oh to nothing. Hit the concrete where the new bleachers will be and came back on the field. Well, he said the wind's blowing out tonight at Wrigley. It could be a day for hitters. You just got to get the ball up in the air. It's blowing straight out to center field. And this one hit so high, it got up at the jet stream, carried out of here. And Dexter Fowler says, I got you, Denard Span. I saw what you did yesterday, and I'm going to do it today. Now, here's Bryant. And he can't check on a pitch that was boring in on him strike one. So that's Dexter Fowler's sixth of the year. Nats have still given up the fewest homers in baseball with 29. And Bryant says I'll join the high fly parade but. Look at Denard Span. he's still going. At the edge of the track. On a ball that normally would have been about halfway from second base to the track. Here's the defense that might have to stand on the warning track tonight with the way the winds blow and more span Harper the outfield Desmond Escobar left side Espinosa Zimmerman right side. Wilson Ramos behind the plate. I saw this today before the game and it was in the Washington Post plays out of his defensive zone Bryce Harper's had 43. I don't know what that means, but it's the third best in the major leagues. I guess it means he's got a lot of range. Yep. He saved 10 runs by himself in right field. That's third most in baseball. That's a lot. That was discussed in our pregame segment today. Here's Anthony Rizzo. Look at all the lift and separate swings from the Cubs so far. I mean. I heard that they hit in the cage today and they got to replace the top of it. Yeah. They were all swinging straight up. They got the softball swings working here early. Why not? Zimmerman down and in and that ball's down and into the corner. Bryce Harper has to dig it out and the Cubs have two extra base hits in their first three batters. Was so good on the inside pitch, the down and inside pitch. You know, the Nats have gone in there a couple times in this series to Anthony Rizzo, and he's answered. Watch what this pitch is slider down and in, foot down early, just drops the barrel on the baseball. Down the corner, a one out double for Anthony Rizzo. That's his 23rd extra base hit.
Jordan, Jordan's going to have his work cut out for him tonight. He's a fly ball pitcher with the wind blowing out. Hendricks is a ground ball pitcher with the wind blowing out. Sterling Castro swinging from the heels, fouls it upstairs on the right side. And you need to get the whole purple thing, Hayes thing with Hendricks out there pitching. Jimmy Hendricks, Kyle. I got it. I got it now. Yeah. Okay. And the 0-2 is a slider away. Jordan's such a good athlete. He throws to first. He didn't take any kind of look back at the runner. Rizzo was waiting for him to throw, and he went on to third base. Not that big of a deal on the second out. Well, watch where Anthony Rizzo is here. He's kind of caught in no man's land. If Jordan turns around right here, he's got a free out at second base. Not Jordan Zimmerman's fault. If you're a middle infantry Hilda right there and you're screaming 2 2 2, you got a chance, but take the easy out at first and now work on the Cubs catcher. Miguel Montero. Hitting a 265, 31 years of age now. This is his entire big league career from 06 till last year with the Diamondbacks. So an interesting number on him. He's the only major league catcher. From 2011 through 2014 to catch a thousand innings every year. So Jordan's had some first inning issues this year. Lately, he's done a good job of settling things down. I think that number might be a little skewed from one outing in Boston. True. That is up and away. And Ramos tried to snap it down into the zone. Mike DeMuro not buying it. And the counts 2 2. Cubby's wearing number 14 on their sleeves to honor Ernie Banks. And behind home plate as well. Mr. Cup. Breaking ball, good stop with the runner at third. And the count goes to three and two. We gotta have confidence in your catcher to try to bury this one in the dirt. See so kind of skip back toward Wilson Ramos, not away from him. Three two pitch with two outs. He walked him. And the young outfielder Jorge Soler is next. Runners well, at the corners. Mike DeMuro has a low zone. You saw it in the first inning with Kyle Hendricks. Giving nothing up around the belt or the top of the strike zone according to pitch track. So here's Soler, who's on a four game hitting streak, seven for 17. Good slight piece down and away from him. He was one for four yesterday. Wilson Ramos threw him out, stealing once. Cloud cover now. He went. Home plate umpire rang him up on that one at so and two. Hasn't mastered the major league art of two out RBI hitting yet, but this is a young man with a lot of potential. And now caught off of first base, the Nats have to watch the runner coming home. And Wilson Ramos makes a pretty good play on a high throw from Danny Espinosa. Not sure where the catcher Montero was going, and he just ran his teammate and his ball club out of the inning.
15 average. So what do they do? They're trying to steal a run right here. Watch Jordan Zimmerman right here. He checks Rizzo at third. That's the key to everything. Rizzo's waiting for Zimmerman to panic and give the ball to Espinoza. Rizzo's going to score from third. He looked them back, so he stopped them in his tracks. And look at Espinoza swing his head to home. Rizzo comes home. So Joe Madden, the guy who thinks out of the box, trying to steal a run with two strikes, two outs, and a guy that struggled with runners in scoring position, Jordan Zimmerman, textbook right there. Danny, Esp Danny Espinoza as well. That was nicely defended by the Nationals. Yeah, and a good grab on a high throw by Ramos at the end. So the Cubs have a one run lead. Harper, Zimmerman, Ramos, Bryce at the plate when Escobar got picked off first. So we've had some base running adventures so far. Harper in the air. Left center. Backing up, backing up. Dexter Fowler. Wow. Anything that's not a can of corn has a chance to leave this yard tonight. What, what vegetable would it be if it wasn't a can of corn? Maybe like, I don't know. That's just the old baseball I term. Know. Tossing a can of corn down from the top shelf and you catch it with your apron. Who's, who started that? I remember looking I, it up one day. Yeah. I'll look it up. I love that term. Yeah. Low and away to Ryan Zimmerman. Go for three with the base on balls yesterday. And that's right in there. But even when it, it looks so hittable from the center field camera, it's still got that last second dip to it. I could be mistaken, but I'm reading right here that Vin Scully started it, and that doesn't shock me a bit. Didn't Vince Scully start all of our baseball tech? Pretty much. Terminology? Yes. That ball rifled up the middle. Look at the stop by Russell. Similar to the way he popped up yesterday off the ground to rob a net of a hit. 21 years and 123 days old today, Addison Russell. Diving up the middle to his feet strong arm we said he's a shortstop he only played five games at second base in the minor leagues Did you see the shortstop arm a lot like Danny Espinoza who was a shortstop his whole career what a play by the Cubs second baseman and the Starlin Castro has struggled the last couple of years there was talk about this young kid they had on the way and the fact that they might have moved Castro but by now but they haven't that's got some swing back action to it. Addison Russell, as FP said, just 21 years of age. So in the very early days of baseball, the outfield was called the cornfield. And in amateur baseball, the outfield may have actually been a farm field. And that's where the term comes from. Well, in Dyersburg, Iowa, it was. If you believe that, everything you read on the internet. <laughs> Ramos and Chopper, third base line. Here comes Chris Bryant, and he's going to throw Wilson Ramos out. Cubs are flashing the gloves and the young arms in this one so far tonight.
UPS at Nationals Park on Monday, June 1st. Nats, welcome the Toronto Blue Jays in town. 7.05 start. The U.S. Army drill team will perform on the field, and there will be a live performance from the Blues Swamp Romp at the Miller Lite scoreboard walk before the game. Probably should have proofread that one. Go to nationals.com to purchase your tickets right now. And the wind is blowing out. Some Expos fans. Making yeah, the, we're watching you. Making the trip down. Bottom of the second, Solaire Coglin and the pitcher Hendricks as they go six, seven, eight. If you were with us for the holiday game yesterday, we told you Joe Madden batting his pitcher eighth every day this year. Up the middle, but that's where Espinosa's playing. That ball was crushed, and Danny made a good play to glove it cleanly. Pretty interesting dynamic of this game so far. Two base running outs where a couple of hitters had a free look at the opposing pitcher. Both hitters, Bryce Harper and Jorge Soler, go up and swing at the first pitch after they got a sneak peek. And how about the play by Danny Espinosa on a bullet with a tough hop? Nicely done. Next up for the Cubs, Chris Coughlin. Walk in a base hit, one for two yesterday. Coughlin, four for 16 career against Jordan Zimmerman with two runs batted in. That ball tailing out of play to the left field side. Bleachers pretty much full. Grandstand maybe slightly over half full on this Tuesday evening. Or half empty. They love it out there. Depending on if you're positive or negative. <laughs> Rockville, Maryland's Chris Coughlin. Went on to play high school ball in Florida, East Lake, and then. Played in Oxford, Mississippi at Ole Miss in the SEC. Small zone tonight. Jordan with a long look into his dugout. Like, hey, where was that pitch? Small zone could be rough night for pitchers. Conklin, they got a piece of it. It'll be 29, or actually 30 in about three weeks. Six years ago, National League Rookie of the Year with the then Florida Marlins. Nissan showing you the AB. Good tailing fastball at 94. Jordan Zimmerman's first KO of the evening. Ninety-four. Cogman might have been thinking about a ball inside. We showed you the, the pitch track. Some early pitches in that at bat set up the last one. Here's Hendricks. And a ball to right field. Bryce Harper tracking it. One pitch out against the opposing pitcher and a very nice quick inning for Jordan Zimmerman. Tyler Moore, Espinosa, and then Jordan. Straight ahead.
history of this ball game, and maybe the wind blowing straight out to center field. You know, Escobar kind of hung out there here too long. Maybe the only thing he's done wrong all season long got picked off to end the top of the first, and then this was a design play in my mind by Joe Madden trying to steal a run. But Jordan Zimmerman looked Anthony Rizzo back. And Joe Madden a little frustrated that his plan was foiled. I like that he's aggressive. Can't argue with his track record. And I love his glasses too. By the way. I think they look great. You and him consult each other on those. <laughs> I like his view on fashion period. He says whatever you wear just rock it own it doesn't matter what you wear on the plane doesn't matter what you wear in the clubhouse if it's you. And it's your style rock it. People forget that he kind of served a strange apprenticeship as a manager with the Angels. 22 games in 96 eight games in 98 29 games in 99. And it took him until 06 to get the Tampa Bay job but uh, every time a manager would have a problem in Anaheim. He was a guy who would step in and then Mike Sosha of course came out there and has been there ever since. He did a hockey jersey themed trip this year. How about that? All the players could wear their favorite team's jerseys. Tough loss for the Hawks. But it was a great game. Well they still got a shot. They better win it game six at home. There's Tyler Moore getting a good look at that slider didn't bite. Tyler is a pinch hitter this year four for 18. With a homer three RBIs it's buying him some playing time with Jason Worth injured. Get some ABs against a right hander tonight. And lays off well again three and two. He's nine for 43 in 28 games with three home runs. That's a good bet at bat right there. The Nats have their second base runner. Well, the Nationals won yesterday. So did the Mets. So it's still two and a half. And a nice call. I mean, it's still early by me in spring training saying the Marlins were going to be one of the best teams in the National League. Well, you didn't know they were going to be an art gallery and not a baseball team. Yeah, that's just a weird deal that's going on down there in South Florida. Danny Espinosa in the number eight spot with a good hitting pitcher next. So the Nats get Hendricks off the stretch again. After a one, two, three second inning. And he was only off the stretch for a couple of pitches before Montero picked off Escobar in the first. I talked to Danny about his at bat in San Diego when he walked up and we heard the audible laughter from the crowd when they showed his mustache on the scoreboard. He said he didn't hear it. Yeah. And I just. I mean every time we show it something good happens so. Let's see. Montero still sitting out there and he got the call that time one and two. And maybe the strike strike two call forced Danny to go out there. Got a piece of it strikes out third K for Hendricks. No, he's been masterful so far with his command. Look at the Mercedes Benz pitch track and now everything's just off the plate, shaving corners, pitching on the black, mixing it up with a fastball and changeup. So here's Jordan Zimmerman. Two for 17 with three RBIs. Showing the Cubs that he wants to bunt Tyler Moore to second base for Denard Spann. Chris Bryant really pinching in at third base. Bent his knees, took a good look at that one, and it's ball two. But Cubs are crashing hard. I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan Zimmerman thinks about pulling it back and swinging. 
especially with the speed at first base of Tyler Moore. I mean, Rizzo's in his face, Bryant's in his face. It's going to have to be a good bunt. Or well, he deadens that beautifully. Tyler Moore saw the downward movement of the ball, got a good jump, and we'll see if Denard Span can tie the game. Nicely done. Sacrifice going 1 4. Here you go, Carp. Dollar Dogs presented by Hatfield returns on Monday, June 1st. As an at stake on the Blue Jays, it's a 7 05 start. The dogs will be available for purchase at all Nats dog stands until the start of the sixth inning. While supplies last, don't be afraid to bring some up to the booth. Get your game tickets now at nationals.com. If you don't bring any upstairs, you could hear the analyst doing an inning of play by play. Span slaps it the other way, and saving the run will be Castro. If that ball gets through, Tyler Moore probably scores. Boy, they've got some athletes on this infield. I mean, first, Addison Russell with a sparkling play. Chris Bryant on a slow roller took a hit away from Wilson Ramos. And then now Starlin Castro for the moment saves a run. The outfield grass is slow here. That was trickling through. Moore would have scored easily. Nice plays all around. Yeah, good job by Tyler not to round the bag too much there. Good shortstop will come up and take a look. Not third base coach to tell you. Ball's right there. Ball's right there on the bag. Yeah, Bob Henley was giving him the stop sign there. See, he doesn't always send everybody. He does have a stop sign in his back pocket. Big spot for Ian Desmond here in the third inning. I want to jam him. That ball was out over the plate, but he goes right side with it. Easy play for Russell. The Nats get a leadoff walk and a two out hit. They've stranded two in a one nothing game. in between outings throw a bullpen session but what are they trying to accomplish in that session how many pitches are they throwing how hard are they throwing well it varies from starter to starter Jordan Zimmerman has adapted over the course of his career and has changed the way that he goes about those bullpen sessions he told me that he throws about 20 to 25 pitches in the bullpen at about 75 percent force earlier on in his career he tried following the formula of Jason Marquis and Levo who threw around 65 pitches in the bullpen but Jordan found that he prefers to focus on those 20 to 25 pitches, make sure his mechanics are sound, and tire his arm out. So Jordan, not going to throw a ton of pitches, just wants to make sure he's in line physically, mechanically, for his next outing. That's good stuff right there, Dan. I want to ask you a question here after a pitch. I'm ready. All right. In the meantime, that was Dan with our Coons.com sideline report. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. First pitch, ground ball. It hit the lip of the grass before the dirt and 
Danny Espinosa had no shot to get to it. So what are the other starters bullpens like or maybe other pitchers on the staff? Are they all like Jordans or does everybody have their own preference? It, it, it very much does vary. FP Tanner Roark now in the bullpen, but you know has experience starting. He throws his bullpen two days after a start like Zimmerman and most starters do. But some guys go three days after an outing. And now that Roark is in the rotation, he says that the focus for him is just making sure that he gets a feel for his pitches. And as I said, like Jordan, too, just wants to get his mechanics right and get physically ready. So two days after for most guys, Tanner Roark has bumped it back now in his career. He goes three days after because he doesn't want to be too worn out in that bullpen session. Interesting stuff. Good stuff, too. Nicely done. Yes, sir. Top of the order, Dexter Fowler. Lifted a high fly ball out of here. It'll lead off the bottom of the first for the Cubs. So Jordan staying away with 93. And the count's 1 1. I know a lot of relievers have gone to shorter amounts of warm up pitches so they could be more fresh later in the season. That's something a lot of guys, I think Drew Storm has been doing that the last couple of years. And that's before they go into a game, not their bullpen session. That's for starters after they start. But that's some advanced stuff, right? Not burning your bullets, warming up to go into the game and using yeah. those eight pitches that you get. Fowler bunts one in the air, but it's too far for Wilson Ramos. In fact, it hit against the screen and then lodged between the screen and the bricks. And get it. You got to get that. Get it, scissors, and get that now. Cuts that screen. They're going to kick him out of no, this. No, you have to get. The, you have Maybe to. the ball boy will give him that the ball. That is the biggest tease I've oh. ever seen in my life. Ball boy turns his back and takes it back to the bag. You got to give it to that guy. It's not fair. One and two. It's just. Awesome for me to see how the game is evolving with less batting practice, less infield. Jordan Zimmerman's smaller amount of pitches in his bullpen, relievers throwing less warm up pitches, all to conserve such a rigors of 162 game schedule, six months, you're grinding every single day and and watching the game kind of go to the next level with you know replay, whatever it is, but yeah. How specific it's getting with these guys. Well the grand old game is changing with the times. It is. And a one two and Jordan tried the change up to get the outside edge. If he threw a change up that's news he's thrown one all year. But maybe he's trying something different with Fowler. Long look, good job of freezing the runner. Espinoza over to get it. And with all his momentum taking him to the right field line, he got the out at first. But that and the speed of the base runner, same thing. Going away, couldn't get it to second base. Wrigley Field, where it's cloudy again, and some dark clouds behind the ballpark. Bob FP and Dan, it's game two of a three game series. John Lester and Max Scherzer tomorrow night, 8.05. DC time. That's trying to win a series here tonight and go for a sweep tomorrow. But they're behind by a run. And here's Chris Bryant. Fly ball to span. Backed him up to the track first time up. That wind is still whipping. Straight out. That guy has been nearly untouchable. Eighty seven down and away to the right hander. But doesn't you get the don't you get the feel that he could pitch every single day? <laughs> like, he would if you let him. I could be all five starters. Look at those numbers. Ninety six and fifty three. 
ERA one six seven right now fourth in the league. And on the road it's one point. I'll, I'll leave out the rest because it's. Those round numbers. Just one. Addison and Russell so far one for two as a big leaguer running. Ryan gets jammed and straight back it goes. Well, I meant earlier when I said the guy's the real deal. It's on base percentage coming in 400. Runners in scoring position good. He's taken 24 walks, 30 RBIs. But I want to see how the league adjusts to him and how he readjusts to the league before I start throwing all these real deals out there. I mean, because as, as a young player, you're going to jump on a league if you have any kind of ability. And how you adjust to how they adjust is going to tell the story with Chris Bryant. We saw that with Bryce Harper. We've seen it with a lot of young players. And you have the feeling that this guy has the talent and the ability to adjust. But I don't think he's gotten that far yet. I think the league's still feeling him out. Where's the holes in his swing? How do we pitch him? Do we bust him in? Do we throw sliders away? It's still a, a search mission for everybody on how to get the young Chris Bryant out. And will he adjust to how the league adjusts to him? Target in. Got his hands inside a fastball. Span going back. It stays in the yard. And heading for third base is Russell. Two outs. Just off the sweet spot enough. Even with the wind gusting out, what, about 20 miles an hour to center field? I'm going to say mini jamage right here. Kept the ball in the park. Oh, check out the full hockey sport. I didn't see that yesterday. Anthony Rizzo a double right field corner first time up eventually thrown out at home on that play when Montero wandered off for first to try to give the chance for Rizzo to score from third. He'll bunt in this situation. Seen him do it more on a shift and I know he did a couple of base hit bunts against the Cardinals last year. They had the Mondo shift on where the third baseman was playing shortstop. Inside the numbers with STG and in some great company as far as his 79 home runs prior to his 26th birthday. Boy, Ron Sano hit a lot of home runs early in his career. Miss him. Hmm. 3 0. Swung yesterday, 3 0. The Ron Santo flag got a statue outside the ballpark. Kind of looked like Jordan didn't want a whole lot to do with him there. Runners at the corners, two outs. It'll be Castro. Second walk. Castro hit that chopper between home and the mound first time. Jordan pounced on it, threw him out. This one over the mound. Well, that ball really scooting up the middle. Danny Espinosa covered it well. Cubs leave two. They've stranded three to the middle innings in a one nothing game.
Wind blowing out. Here's our next five. John Lester and Max Scherzer. That will be a beauty. Tomorrow, day off. And then we go to Cincinnati for three. Boy, the Reds have lost nine in a row. And they are scuffling. We'll give you the pitching matchups for that tomorrow night. And then the Blue Jays and the Cubs appear at Nationals Park on the homestand next week. How about that for tomorrow? That is a good pitching matchup, said Captain Obvious. Can't wait. We've got raindrops coming down here. That's no good. Weather men in Chicago, are they the highest paid in the country? If not, they should be. Keeping up with all of this. There's Escobar. There's that changeup. It's right down the middle, belt high. Sun came out for a little while. Look at the beautiful rainbow. Is that a double rainbow? Yeah. Good That's take. a great take. Is. Mm. I swung at that really hard. And missed it by a mile. And that's outside. Escobar turning this into a good AB. He was hit by a pitch first time up. And then got picked off first by Montero with Bryce Harper in the box. So in front of the hottest hitter in the league, the rookie walks Escobar. Second walk, he's also hit a bat. And an awesome conversation with Bryce Harper before the game today. And we were talking about how teams work him and how he thinks with catchers instead of pitchers. And I'm not going to name any of the catchers he told me or the teams that they catch for. But he said there's certain guys in the league that he really thinks well with, thinks along the same lines, not so much guesses, but has an idea of their game plan and at bat to at bat situation to a situation how they pitch him. And it was very interesting. There's some guys FP. I just know what's coming. There's some guys I really can't think with. So while you've seen him take all these pitches borderlines swinging at strikes taking balls. He's a thinking man's hitter and he has an idea how certain guys not the pitcher but the catcher are going to work him. Very interesting stuff. One ball no strikes. Pitch up and enough tail at the end of it to get out toward the end of the barrel. And I was kind of amazed at some of the guys that he told me that he thinks along with. Just leave that little teaser out there. Don't want to divulge any information, but you do know how teams work. You catchers get into patterns. And if you're thinking at all down there, you can see what they're trying to do to you on a daily basis. That's a bet for base runners. Harper to the right side. Russell Castro and a 4 6 3. Oh, nice feed by Russell. Nice turn by Castro. And Harper hit it hard enough, even with his speed, for the double play. Compared Hendricks to Doug Fister early on in this ball game, he works fast. He's throwing strikes, and what have we seen from the Cubs' defense? Lots of good plays. They're on their toes. That they are. In there to Zimmerman. Absolute larceny up the middle, first time up. Hit the ball extremely hard. Russell seemed to glove it when it was by him. And on that play and the one he made on Michael Taylor yesterday his ability to pop straight up and make the throw very impressive.
If you're a Nats hitter right now, you're thinking to yourself, please just throw me something, Bell tie out over the plate that I can lift. But Hendricks hasn't really given him anything to do that with. He lifted one yesterday, Wilson Ramos. 0 2. Zimmerman really jammed on that one. A lot has been made around Chicago lately of the Cubs. Kind of sagging offense other than Bryant and Rizzo. They've scored more than half of their runs lately on home runs, and they've done it here tonight. Zimmerman gets one to pull. Bryant to his left. And the Cubs infield defense very, very good tonight. That's at a leadoff walk, and it's still one nothing after three and a half. Let off the game with a home run. Game two of the series. Dexter Fowler, center fielder, leads the game off for the Cubbies with a home run. And if you missed it, that's all you've really missed. Some good defensive plays by the Cubs. Jordan Zimmerman has locked it in since, and we go to the bottom of the fourth, one to nothing. Cubs. Kendrick, 53 pitches, 31 strikes. Jordan, 35 strikes out of his 50. Montero, Soler, and Coughlin. Five, six, seven for the Cubbies. The Cubs have played 22 one run games this year, winning 12 of them. That's the most in baseball. Yeah, and Joe Madden was talking about that yesterday. He chalked some of it up to, hey, they have a winning record, but. He thinks as his club matures, they'll find ways to win more of those. Certainly hopes so. But you can look at their lineup now, and now you finally see what the plan is here. It's been a little hard to spot for a number of years. That ball's in the right center. Harper's going to get there quickly and keep the catcher to a single. For the Cubs, their fourth hit. And the third inning out of four, where the leadoff man's been on. It's had trouble with guys on base out of the stretch this year. And that's a big difference, right? That is a huge difference. First pitch slider to the aggressive. Jorge Soler.
And this ball to right. Bryce Harper circling and under it. First out, fourth inning. For the Achiever and you, PNC Bank with our minor league report. Richard Blyer. He's been with the Blue Jays, the Rangers, now the Nats. Signed him as a minor league free agent, did Mike Rizzo last December 12th. And doing a big time job for Harrisburg, the Eastern League Pitcher of the Week. Winning three games in a week with a 248 ERA. Call him up, he's so ready. Rocky Blyer. Well, he's in Pennsylvania. That, there's a chance that might be his nickname. Be, could be related. I, I don't know. Chris Coglin struck out swinging first time. Would it be his dad? No. Like just do the math. No. I don't know. Uncle, Uncle Rocky. Does it spell 27 the same? Seven years of age. Yeah, the spelling's the same. Right. I don't put me on the spot. I just was reading what was on the screens, and I liked Rocky Blyer a lot. Yeah, he was. He was kind of the uh, under the radar, but really fun to watch. Steeler from those great teams. Scrappy. And Coughlin on a pitch inside. Harper late break. Here he comes. And he'll run it down. Coughlin took a big swing there. And Bryce Harper covering serious Wrigley Field turf. Well, when you play outfield at Wrigley Field and the wind's blowing out, your first inclination or your first thought is on any fly ball, it's going over your head, not in front of you. And you saw the jab step for Bryce Harper, then the makeup speed to make a nice play. You're watching the flags. You're seeing what's going on. You saw a ball go over your head for a home run already. That's why I broke back. Kyle Hendricks hit a fly ball to Bryce Harper first time. Five for 44 is a big league hitter. Two for 20 this year. Make a play. I still haven't found it. Carlo Zambrano jersey spotted in that. Yeah. Crowd. <laughs> Don't get that jersey upset. <laughs> might squeeze you to death might before you get you, out of here. Might fight you. <laughs> sure Michael Barrett enjoyed that somewhere. Michael Barrett's uh, down in Georgia working for the Braves. That's right. Used to work for the Nats. Yeah, we saw him in Atlanta. Obviously a confused individual at this point. He's working for the Braves. Great guy, great teammate. We wish him nothing but the best. He could be a big league manager someday for sure. Fastball away, fouled upstairs. Sun coming through the top of the lower deck here. Shining on Jordan Zimmerman. That pitch up and in. Three balls, two strikes. Man, his shadow could reach over and tag Miguel Montero. His shadow could dunk. That's all you think that is, like 12 foot three? Well, it's 60 feet from him to first base, so that shadow is about 50 yeah. or 55 of it. And with the runner moving, Hendricks refuses to swing and miss. Pitch number nine coming. I mean, he even reminds me of Doug Fister at the plate. Yeah. 
And he draws a walk. It's one of the better at bats you'll see all year from a pitcher. Two on, two out for Addison Russell. Good trip right here by Ian Desmond going to talk to Jordan Zimmerman. Just lost a tough battle. Let him have a breath of fresh air, relax a little bit, maybe even calm him down, even though you can never tell if Jordan is excitable. So good shortstops do. I like that. Russell base hit right field first time. First pitch swinging. Bottom of the third. Can you think of another shortstop that you've seen this year make a trip to the mound? I can't. Hmm. Maybe Simmons from Atlanta. Other than that, I can't remember any shortstops going to the mound. And they're the captain of the infield for those of you that don't know. Well, that at bat made this a long inning. Ten pitches to the opposing pitcher and a chance to end the inning, which did not happen. And Russell will lift one. Span broke back. Here he comes. So the Nats take care of that. Cubs have left five. The Nationals very much in this one. Looking to break through with the Honda Dua in the top of the fifth. More in Espinosa after Wilson Ramos. Fans, yoga fans, come out to the ballpark Sunday, June 7th for an all your yoga in the outfield. To purchase a special game ticket, enjoy a 45-minute yoga session in the outfield grass after the Nats-Cubs game and receive a Nationals yoga mat. Yoga in the outfield tickets are limited and can be purchased at nationals.com slash yoga. All right. I will not be doing that. I can't even touch my toes. Inside the numbers with STG, Nats offense in May. A month about to end, or we're going to be kind of sad to see it go. Look at the ranks in key offensive categories. Jason Ward sighting. There he is. Ramos, one swing that won the game for the Nats yesterday. Got to disclaim something from a moment ago. Michael Barrett indeed working for the Nats. Very good big league receiver, roving catcher, catching instructor. Golf Coast League manager when the Golf Coast League starts. And that's good. Good guy to still have after his solid career. Play here in Chicago for a while. I don't have to dislike him because he doesn't work for the Braves. Two and one. Oh. 
on a pitch up. Ramos right center. And that ball is caught by Soler. Brought up a big divot. One out. Top of the fifth. And saying he couldn't see it. I don't know if it was in the lights. Kind of a weird time. The sun's setting right behind right field. And just watching Jorge Soler for a game and a half. He's taking some interesting routes out there. Made a nice play in the bullpen yesterday, diving head first toward the bricks. Nice play right there, staying with it. Tyler Moore goes up hacking. That's out of play right side. Center cut and that ball is gashed into left center. Tyler Moore on for the second time. Big round to first. Coglin up with it. And the Nats have their second hit of the night. Well, the way things are going and the way the Cubs have been playing defense in the infield, you half thought that Starlin Castro was going to catch this one. Pretty good effort by the Cubs shortstop and the Nats finally. Get one through the infield. Nice swing by Tyler Moore. Big route of the bag. Make him stop you. Nice job. And the Nats only other hit. Castro went deep in the hole to keep it from going into left field back in the third on a ball that probably would have scored Tyler Moore to tie the game. So here's Espinosa. First step back to Danny, everything away. Two seam fastballs away, change ups away. Saw Anthony Rizzo shading his eyes with his bare hand. He and Tyler Moore looking right into the sunlight. Coming through the lower part of the ballpark. Espinosa hits one hard. Four, six, three. Keeping the ball down. The impressive Kyle Hendricks in this one so far tonight. One and nothing. Sun setting here at Wrigley Field in everybody's eyes. Head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Cubs up. Come out to Nats Park on Thursday, June 4th as the Nats take on these very Chicago Cubs. First 25,000 fans get a Ryan Zimmerman bobblehead that's presented by PNC Bank. It commemorates his walk-off homer at Nats Park on opening day 2008. Go to nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. No, shouldn't the bobblehead have 10 heads on it? Because he's had 10 walk off home runs. I mean, that would be an interesting bobblehead. That'd be really top heavy. Yeah. 10 Zim head bobblehead day bobblehead. Top of the order, bottom of the fifth.
Fowler a home run and a ground ball to second. Hendricks by the way could be around for a while 61 pitches in five innings thanks to two double play balls in the fourth and the fifth. Need some shades. He's got shades. I don't even think shades would help right now. <laughs> Challenge fastball in there at 94. Since fastballs jumping all of a sudden. Good looking slider there at 88. Foul tip. And Jordan Zimmerman, second K of the night. Mercedes Benz will track it. Slider down and in, 88 miles an hour. Fowler not even seeing the rotation right over the top. Subtle break late. See the release point, the rotation, and the dot on the baseball that maybe Dexter Fowler didn't recognize. If only you could see the game in Expo as a hitter. <laughs> that would be cool. You could really let it get deep. That was a pretty good fastball to Brian fouled straight back. He's at two fly balls to Denard Span. Rolls over that one and that's foul. Said those right field bleachers when they get done will be rough on a night like this. Yeah, I was looking from down the field today, Carp, in the new bleachers in left center field on the other side are, are much more steep, and with the scoreboard, yeah, it's kind of creating like a big blockage of the wind. And I'm wondering how this is going to play throughout the course of the season. The old bleachers weren't as steep as these. It's kind of hard to tell on TV, but they go more, more straight up in the air. And you have that big scoreboard left center, and it's almost like, I don't know, it's, I think it's going to prove that the ball flies that way this yeah. year. Well, they had to make them steeper because there's still Waveland Avenue back there. And uh, you can't take over a street. And so they, it, they made them steeper. See the bleachers over on the left side? That's about as high as they used to go right. all the way across. So now they're higher and they're steeper plus the scoreboard. That thing's got to be a good 40 feet tall. I tell you this could be some kind of hitters park. Starting in about a month. It could be. It might be. Might be. It could it be. Is. It will be. <laughs> Great slider by the way to Chris Bryant from Jordan yeah, Zimmerman for the strikeout. Rizzo has doubled and walked. He's into his rhythm, isn't he? Anybody that's seen Jordan Zimmerman over the years right now got a good rhythm going, good tempo going, slider first strike, curveball first strike, and the fastball is really jumping late. Primarily heaters to the lefties, and he gets uh, Rizzo a little overmatched there. 82 diving. Back knee slider, disappearing curveball. Rizzo, he's really able to get to balls down and in, fighting them off to stay alive. In one case tonight, doubling down the line. But as a hitter, if I see a fastball in right there, I'm thinking, boy, he might try that again. And what pitch works off of that is a slider in the same spot. 
Your brain tells you it's another heater. You swing a little bit early. It breaks under your hands. Let's see if they go in there. He'll show him 94 away. Rizzo went. He's going to be called out there. Can't believe it. Jordan Zimmerman strikes out the side. And we're talking about three quality hitters here. The leadoff guy Fowler. And then watch the slight piece to Chris Bryant. He takes care of Rizzo after that. He threw that inning like he wanted to lead off in the sixth. Has turned into a perfect day. Crazy weather all afternoon long. Here's Jordan Zimmerman, top of the sixth. Has a sacrifice tonight, his second of the year. Paint. Yeah, he's used just about every quadrant of the strike zone. Not many of them upstairs. Zimmerman got a breaking ball and Chris Bryant takes care of that. Inside the numbers STG. The May report card is brilliant. One game better than the Minnesota Twins who are second behind Kansas City in the AL Central now. Giants have had a great month with Posey Crawford and Belt leading the way offensively and the Rangers are resurgent. They've won six in a row. Josh Hamilton made his return there yesterday. Span to deep short a base hit last time. Because of the double plays, Hendricks has faced the minimum number of hitters since. I'm going to circle that play by Starlin Castro in a one run game, keeping Tyler Moore at third base and Denard Span single in the 5.5 hole. So the box a little empty. Span that base hit. Clean single by Tyler Moore last inning. He's been on base twice.
And that ball popped up left side. Span hoping it gets out, but it won't. Two down. And you're talking about a guy coming off a complete game, a five hitter at San Diego. Last time up when he threw 108 pitches, 71 strikes. No ill effects whatsoever from going the distance for the first time in his career. He has struck out Ian Desmond and bounced him out to second base. Good take and it's 2 and 0. On a pitch up, Desmond to right center. It'll get deep enough that he's going to try to go to second. Soler throws it in offline and late. And Ian Desmond checks in with his 14th double of the year. And that's an 11 game hitting streak. Well, it's the first pitch that he's really thrown down the middle of the plate all night long. So Ian Desmond gets into a 2 0 count. And does a nice job of slapping that one to right center field, getting in scoring position for Yunel Escobar, who's reached a couple of times, hit by pitch and a walk. Yeah, that on base percentage is over 370 again. Trying to keep the inning alive for Bryce Harper and tie it up in the process. 89 swings back for a strike. And that ball inside out swing action to the right side for Russell. The Nationals are gone. They've stranded three tonight. And Hendricks masterful through five and a half. Or maybe just a prism. One enough as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Now it's time for Toyota Case for Kids. And we're going to watch Jordan Zimmerman with some strikeouts here today. Recently, the fastball is really jumping out of his hand. He's got a good slider going, as you see right there, to Dexter Fowler. Another slider to Chris Bryant. And a curveball to Anthony Rizzo because it couldn't hold up. So secondary pitch is good, fastball good. He's just looking for some runs from his offense. Now time for Toyota Case for Kids. Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families. They're making a donation of 37 bucks to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by Nats pitcher this season. 87 pitches through five. Castro, Montero, Soler, four, five, six. Up the middle, hops on through. Slider that was sitting up a bit. 
And Starlin Castro has his first hit in this series in seven at bats. So the Cubs box score the only run obviously on the Fowler first inning homer. A Rizzo double. Then a base running out after that first inning. Their next hit Russell in the third. Montero in the fourth. And so they've had their leadoff man on four out of six innings tonight. Montero has walked and singled. Joe Madden likes to put runners in motion and it's not necessarily a hit and run. He just likes to stay out of the double play more like a run and hit. Meaning if the base runner gets a decent jump the, the hitter is not doesn't have to put the ball in play but he'd like for the hitter to swing kind of like a modified hit and run. Those of you that might not know, a hit and run is as a hitter, you got to swing at the pitch no matter where it is, and it's up to you to put the ball on the ground. Well, a 2 0 count here. And as you mentioned earlier, no high strike zone tonight. Throw the bat away just yet. Nissan will track the 3 0 pitch. That's a little more in the box. They're all close. Let's see if he starts Starling Castro right here in a 3 1 count. As the runner holds, bouncing ball. Zimmerman. He goes back to the bag to receive it. 363 from Ian Desmond. Two Zimmermans covering first base there. Only needed one. On the same team for eight straight years. So the Cubs have a couple of double plays. And now the Nats jump into the act. Good feed by Ryan Zimmerman. Hustles back to the base. Jordan Zimmerman puts on the brakes. And there's a whole lot of Z's and M's and N's at first base on the back end of this one. Yep. <laughs> so there. Ground ball, fly ball, and this one it's on the roof. On to the roof. But the fans here know they come back often. It's coming back. So they'll wait and wait and wait. Coming here it comes. Back. There it is. Look out. I mean, this is like playing wiffle ball. And the ball goes up on the roof of the garage, and yeah. you sit there and wait, and if you catch it, it's an out. Love it here. Ball hit to the left side. Escobar cuts it off. Well, that's a big inning for Jordan Zimmerman. As I mentioned, started with 87 pitches. With Harper leading off, Jordan might be around for a while.
presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Beautiful evening at Wrigley Field. It's a 1-0 game. 2-1 yesterday. And here we go with Harper, Zim, and Ramos on the Mazda do up and what they've done career here at the friendly confines. So one nothing game Bryce Harper up you got to be careful right here if you're Hendricks but you also can't walk the leadoff man so this should be interesting. So interesting to note that Bryce hasn't hit a home run at Wrigley Field. Told me today Pittsburgh and Chicago Wrigley Field the only two places he hasn't. It's a good take. Two and oh. Wow, that was a strike for a while, and Bryce laid off ball three. But he was swinging all the way, and watch him hit the brakes right here once he realizes it's a changeup and it's going out of the zone. Pitch recognition has been unbelievable. On a pitch up that sky to left. It's going. Coglin back. It's going. And Bryce Harper adds Wrigley Field onto his career list. That's number 17. And the game's tied. Have you ever seen a golfer swing, throw his club down, and be frustrated, and then the ball end up like two feet from the hole? <laughs> Bryce Harper just threw his bat down in frustration. And the ball went out of here. He said, I just missed this. Dang it. And then he realized he was playing at Wrigley Field. And then he realized the wind is blowing out. And when he got to first base, he realized that he hit a 17th home run. He just tied this ball game up. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Zimmerman goes up hacking. Castro fights that ball a bit and gets it cleanly for the first down. So Bryce's RBI total up to 42. <laughs> His reaction is like, are you kidding me? That ball got out of here? That's a routine fly ball to left. And did you also see Coglin? He circled. Coglin ended up moving out towards center field under this ball. Yeah. Just got up in the jet stream right here. He's thinking, wait, wait a minute. Oops. It was blowing from left to right. And he got out here by three rows. And Kyle Hendricks said, you kidding me? Well, Kyle, you had a one nothing lead on a ball that had some of that same action, right? By Dexter Fowler back in the first. <laughs> That's how good you're going, Bryce Harper. Pop up to left, gone. Yeah, and I take back what I said about can of corns <laughs> staying in the ballpark tonight. Although that did have a nice sound to it. But I mean, that thing was a mile high. He's still in disbelief. Matt Williams is saying, welcome to Wrigley Field. Yeah. Matty had a few taters here. Wilson Ramos has been robbed twice tonight by Bryant <laughs> and by Solaire. He's still got the look of disbelief on his face. I love it. Great shot right there, guys. Another opposite field homer, by the way, for Bryce. San Diego, Washington, Chicago. It's, it's almost like he got away with something. He got his hand caught in the cookie jar, and he feels guilty that that went out of here just by his reaction. Ramos reaching, two outs. So, for more on Bryce, here's Dan. Bob, the other day, Chicago reporters circled around Bryce at his locker, and one of the questions that a reporter asked him is, did you get a chance to pop out onto the field, see what the flags are doing, see how the wind's blowing? Bryce cracked a big smile. He said, I don't need wind. Well, he got a little bit of help from the wind right there, and he's going to take it. And, and I saw that quote in the Chicago Tribune, and according to this writer, he said, I don't need that. I'm good. And the writer gave the impression that Bryce was saying, yeah, I'm, I'm really good. I, I think maybe Bryce said, I'm good. You know, don't need to see the flags. I mean, if he said he's good, he is good, so who cares? I'd say I'm good if I was Bryce, too. Newsflash, I'm good. That ball cracked a deep short by Tyler Moore. Long throw by Castro. Cubs defense continues to shine 
But the Nats tie it up on a Bryce Harper towering opposite field home run, his 17th of the year. Watch it fly, and you can watch it along with Bryce, who didn't think he got it. The Nats get back even on the Harper opposite field home run. 1-1 one, one game. On kind of a wacky night at Wrigley Field. 1-5-0 Cubs, 1-4-0 Nats. And we'll all take it along with Bryce. RBI the, number 42. The wackiest part of this game is that it's a one-to-one -one ball game. I think it speaks to how both pitchers are throwing here tonight. Time for your T-Mobile game changer. Win gusting out of Wrigley, folks. Usually these are 10 to 9 ball games, but tonight one to one Dexter Fowler let it off with the home run Bryce Harper <laughs> with Some laughs in the dugout And the traditional handshake no handshake to Matt Williams after a Harper home run So maybe that makes up for the one that Mookie Betts robbed in Boston early in the season I had that thought right after it left the yard here What Fenway took away Wrigley giveth So here's Coglin. Henricks the pitcher on deck and then Russell 789 for the Cubs Jordan Zimmerman perfect fastball to the outside edge he threw only eight pitches in the sixth inning because of that double play went seven against the Yankees last time two runs on five hits and the Nats 3 2 win Pedro stroke for the Cubs. That's a hot shot. Desmond on a hop. Nifty pickup for the out. We're seeing some serious D on both sides tonight. Are we getting the hit speed all the time? I want to know how hard Ian Desmond just threw that ball to first. I mean, nice play on the short hop. Tie ball game. Bottom of the seventh. Watch the tricky play. And then just stand up, and here comes the cannon. <laughs> Zimmerman. Joe Mann is going to hit for his pitcher here with Junior Lake. Lake is two for three career against Jordan Zimmerman. Maybe not a bad thing for the Nats to get Henricks out of this game. He's been really good. Lake 0 for three is a pinch hitter. Shows bunt and that's a perfect slider at the knees. 25 year old infielder from San Pedro de Macadis of the Dominican Republic hit just 211 here last year in 108 games. Bunt is the last thing I would do here tonight. <laughs> Unless you bunt it really hard in the air. Yeah, might go. And a fastball hit to center. Span back. 
put on the brakes almost slipped on the grass and able to keep his composure and his balance. So it rained here a lot today. The storm moved through right before the game, obviously delayed. And you remember a couple weeks back, the Pirates lost an extra inning game. And I'm trying to think who it was in right field that slipped and fell, and the Cubs walked him off. It was Polanco, I believe. And you see the divot by Spanny almost did the same thing. Good balance to keep his feet. Jordan Zimmerman continues to attack the strike zone. Right in there to Addison Russell. Just like that, 0 and 2. Pitch number 106 coming. I mean, he's getting stronger as this one goes. Seems like it, doesn't it? Yep. His season high, 107 against the Braves. That ball fouled straight back. And a good slider, Lake, or rather, uh, Russell down to foul it away. And the 93 upstairs, three and two. Center. It is at the bottom of the Ivy, stays in the yard, and a two out double for Addison Russell, who's hit three home runs. Probably didn't hit it high enough to blow away. He didn't get it over the roof of the stadium. So just throwing a strike right here, a little slider that didn't slide. Russell got the cement mixer, maybe a little bit out in front. And the slider's been good from Jordan all night. Kind of left that one up. And the best part about that is it stayed in the ballpark for the Nats. And the bullpen just now starts to get busy. Matt Thornton is up. Fowler is on tap to bat here. Nats are taking up some time here. Right handed batter Bryant on deck. Steve McCaddy now on his way to buy some more time. Super double secret delay, get the bullpen going. Jordan Zimmerman over 100 pitches. And they're just giving him a breather. That's all this is about. Get your bullpen up, get them working. Got a big hitter in Dexter Fowler who's accounted for the only Cubs run of the night. You remember the leadoff home run? It's been it. Well, Jordan has certainly acquitted himself. Came into this ball game with a 627 career ERA at Wrigley Field. And after that first fly ball blew out of here, he's been outstanding. Well, the sixth home run of the year for Dexter Fowler, top of the first inning, got a fastball in the inner half. And we talked about the wind. He just got it up over the roof of the stadium, let it carry out of right field. And there's nobody there to throw that one back. Even though it's a home home run and they wouldn't have. So that's a horrible point. Here's Fowler. Ground ball in the strikeout since. And he's late for 93. Well you talk about smelling the finish line. Remember what uh, Max Scherzer said. He thinks about his last 15 or 20 pitches. Jordan Zimmerman's last Assortment here very good today. He 
lot of stuff on that breaking ball right there, and it's no balls, two strikes. Well, if he gets one more out, the Nats can go into the eighth tight and pinch hit for him. After Espinosa leads off. He got him. Fowler trying to check. Jordan Zimmerman battling through seven great innings on the road here tonight. Crazy conditions for a pitcher. Fowler debates it with Mike DeMuro. He's gone. Strikeout number five for Zimmerman, who still has a chance to be the winner. That's be going for a sweep. They don't want it to be a rubber game. They want to win the series tonight. Max Scherzer, 72 strikeouts, third in the league, 167 ERA. Then there's John Lester, the Cubs' big high price acquisition of their offseason. He's 4-2, and two, and the Nats have never beaten him in a couple of starts. 7.30, Nats extra, Nats and two tomorrow night. Pedro Strope. Nats faced him and he was with Baltimore a couple of years ago. And they say he's throwing as well as anybody in their bullpen right now. He's missing bats with the slider. You saw he throws it more than his fastball. 24th appearance for Stroke. And the league hitting just 155 against the fastball that averages 95 and the slider that averages 83. Danny Espinosa 0 for 1 career against him. Played a lot of games in this ballpark cart with the wind blowing out. You got to tip your cap to both starting pitchers tonight. They were lights out. For this Absolutely. to be a 1 1 game at this point is shocking to me. And, and the reason why is both guys were fantastic. Now, Clint Robinson to hit for Zimmerman next. And there's a couple of nasty breaking balls. 0 oh 2. Aaron Barrett. Because Bryant will lead off the eighth. Then the left hander Rizzo, the right hander Castro. Danny Espinosa didn't come close to any of those. One out. The Peanuts are back. We got great promotions and giveaways May 27th through June 2nd. They'll be at the Feds. Go to the website. Or call the number on your screen for more information. Clint Robinson as a pinch hitter, three for 16, couple of RBIs. Fastball tailing away. Oh. 
Montero could barely catch it and he got a called strike with it. Almost took it out of the zone with the way he caught the backup slider from Pedro Strope. He's expected that to go the other way down and into Robinson. It backed up. And Robinson to the right side. It's right at Addison Russell. Two outs. Next up, Denard Span, two for two against Trope. Career end. A big leadoff hit yesterday. A fastball from Watt on the inner half. And I'm just going to go on a limb here and say the next team that hits a high fly ball to left wins. <laughs> just, just. Does it have to be left? I mean, you don't get that kind of. Analyzation anywhere. Denard Span, a single, a double career against the right hander. Interesting situation as we get to the eighth and ninth innings. The Nats, the first place team, hottest team in baseball, finding ways to win these games. Against the young Cubs, still trying to kind of discover that formula. Span lifting one to right. It is going, and Denard Span has done it. Second home run of the series, fifth of the year into the netting. The Nets on top, two to one. I meant high fly ball to right. Well, that's why I said, does it have to be to left? Not this one. Denard Span with his fifth. That's right, fifth home run of the year here at the top of the eighth to put the Nets up two to one. How about that? Jordan Zerman all of a sudden in line for the win. Yeah, they're trying to do tonight what they did for Tanner Roark yesterday. Get the lead run right after he left the game. And hit 20 this year. He's three away from his career high, and it's the 26th of May. Desmond to right looked like Solaire was battling the lights at the end of that one. Denard Span two for four tonight. Another multi-hit game for him, and he has five home runs on the year. Over the IV in right field. Great extension on that. Saw Danny Espinosa before the game today. He was doing a spot on imitation of Denard Span. The only thing he didn't do was say he was going to hit a game, well, I guess, going ahead home run in the middle of the eighth. He's Benz of Alexandria. Two to one Nats as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Jordan Zimmerman, the story of this game, gave up a leadoff home run to Dexter Fowler. Then after that, crickets. The slider was good for strikes. The curveball was good for balls and strikes. But 
that's really, I guess, his only mistake of the day. A lofted fly ball to right. So the wind blowing out. Bryce Harper says, you know what? I'll do that too. He gets one up in the jet stream, ties the game at one. And the dark span just hit this one. I don't think the wind had a whole lot to do with it. It was low, it was hard, and it put his ball club ahead by one. Aaron Barrett we got a couple of outs to end the eighth inning yesterday against Addison Russell and Dexter Fowler faces Chris Bryant for the first time here. Key for anybody coming in this game is keep the ball down. That's a great slider. So the Nats have scored four runs in this series on four home runs. Matt Thornton back up. Rizzo next. Save might be right here. Bryant, Rizzo, Castro. Bryant 0 for 3 tonight. Two fly balls to center. Zimmerman's third strikeout victim, fifth inning. And the 96 is low, two and two. Travis Wood, right hander, their closer, Hector Rondo. By the way, Escobar, Harper, and Zimmerman, 3 4 5 in the ninth. And the count's full, 3 and 2. Not a bad miss below the zone if he wants to chase. Right. I gotta, excuse me, Carmen, I got to make a pitch. Bryant's drawn 24 walks this year. Strikeout guy against a good young hitter. 3 2. Challenge fastball. Bryant late. Three two again. That's high in the air, and this game is tied. That didn't need the win. Chris Bryant's second homer of this series, and the seventh of his big league career. He's been having trouble with the slider in this series. Not that one. It backed up on Aaron Barrett. He wanted that down and away. It spun up there down the middle of the plate. And I think, I couldn't tell, but it hit the very top of the scoreboard here at Wrigley Field. You're right, Carp. That didn't need him any wind at all. That ball was hammered. Barrett is done after one hitter. It'll be Matt Thornton for the next hitter, Anthony Rizzo. It's now 2-2.
3 2 pitch. And Bryant with a one for four tonight, a loud one for four. Here's Matt Thornton now against Rizzo. A fastball slider change, fastball 94. 18th appearance for Thornton. Seven strikeouts against four walks. League at 150. That's an ass left hander. And play still buzzing from the Chris Bryant home run. Wow. Rizzo for two with a ground ball in the pop up against Matt Thornton. He's really crowding the plate. And the counts two and all the fastball right off his belt buckle. At the knees. So every run in the series so far and solo home runs. Yep, by both teams. And a bouncing ball, Danny Espinosa from right field to a knee for the first out. Nobody else warming up, so this is Thornton's inning because Montero on deck is left handed. Castro now. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, celebrating 13 years. Watch every other market game live or on demand, true HD, and over 400 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. Are you like me? Are you, are you thinking you could see these two teams playing in October? Because it's had that feel the first two games. Well, I can think of two cities that would be bonkers if that happened. In a good way. Castro one for two. Career against Matt Thornton. He's trying to hit one over the scoreboard in center. But he didn't get it, and Bryce Harper is there. Two outs. Everything in the air, the crowd's going nuts. That's out of here. Next up, lefty lefty matchup with Miguel Montero. And that's the man Thornton came in last night to retire in the eighth inning. Pinch inning for the pitcher with a pop up to second base. Montero walk base hit and a 363 double play ball. We build this series as a two young phenoms going head to head, and they both had a good series to this point. Chris Bryant with a couple of home runs, Bryce Harper, his 17th here tonight, a double yesterday. They've both been impressive as advertised. Montero able to lay off. Pop fly and Ian Desmond is there. So Matt Thornton comes on to get three in a row after Brian Homer's off of Barrett. It'll be Escobar, Bryce Harper, and Ryan Zimmerman. Top of the ninth.
DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code DUGOUT for free entry. Buy your local BMW centers. And buy visitannapolis.org. Find the Chesapeake experience at visitannapolis.org. 2-2 ball game. Who's going to hit the next solo home run? Now maybe if you can lead off walk, you can move him around a little bit. For every Nationals walk here, first group cross boost here contributes 50 bucks to support girls on the run, D.C. That's drawn 152 walks for a total of 7,600 bucks. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Back to Rondona, 1 2 3 ninth last night. He'll face Escobar Harper Zimmerman after he got Ramos, Espinosa, and Taylor. Yeah, the theme of this series is get me on, get me over, and yeah. get me in. And that's what a bunch of hitters have done. So here we go. Top nine, two, two. You're in scoring position when you get in the batter's box. Escobar, 0 for 1, hit by a pitch and a walk. Slider. Slider, upper 80s, fastball, upper 90s. Escobar facing Rondone for the first time. He got too much of the plate with that one, and Escobar puts it into left field. It's a single, ladies and gentlemen. It's a single, but the line moves to that guy. <laughs> they hit a pop-up out of here for home run number 17 last time up. You know, Escobar, nice job right here. Got a fastball down the middle. So tie ball game, top of the ninth. Lead-off man on for the Nats, and the Bryce Harper show just stepped in the batter's box, folks. Text your friends. He's up. Inside the numbers with Jeep. The dynamic RBI duo, 74 between Bryce and Ryan, the next two hitters. Harper 0 for 1 career against Rondone. That ball has killed the center and turning around and finding it, Dexter Fowler. Any altitude at all, and it's a 4 2 uh, game. Could these kids play or what? Shot out of a cannon. Dexter Fowler turned around a couple of times. He got a center cut fastball. And he thought it was over Fowler's head. I guess they all equal. Let's listen. Kind of loud. Maybe knuckling too. Did you see that go a yeah. couple different ways on Fowler? It's a great shot from behind the plate. Here's Zimmerman. Ryan won for three against Rondone. It's a fun one here in the friendly confines, isn't it? Yesterday, same way. Yeah, as action packed as a 2 1 game and yeah. a 2 2 game could be. Yep. Great defense, taters, good pitching. Ooh. Better not throw another one there. Matt Grace, Casey Jansen. Short lead. 2 1. Every swing has me flinching at the moment. Either team, you see something down the middle, you just get the ball up in the air and. Zimmerman, seventh most RBIs in the National League. 0 for 3 tonight in the series. 0 for 6 with a walk.
Runner going. Out of play. Right field corner. 97 on the fastball. Don't think it was a hit and run by Matt Williams. You don't usually do that with a guy like Ryan Zimmerman. Escobar just got a good jump. And Zimmerman got a good pitch to hit. Escobar a big secondary lead but he got back Montero kept it in front. So decision time for Matt Williams do you start you know Escobar here in a 3 2 count one out. If you think that Ryan Zimmerman is going to put it in play you do. But you could also sit back and hope that he gets a hold of one. We'll see what happens. The on deck hitter Wilson Ramos over for three career against Rondon. As mentioned Zimmerman one for three. 3 2 runner going. Called strike three. Escobar swiping second. And I don't know why he went wandering off the bag. Brian Zimmerman doesn't know he was called out on strikes. Now he does. A lot of times as a runner, you hear the catcher's mitt and you think it's a foul ball. A nice pick right there by Addison Russell. To keep Escobar at second base, and maybe Escobar was thinking nobody's at third. I'm going to pull a Mookie Betts right here, and he used Bob Davison as a shield to get back to second base. Uh, hey, he's in scoring position. Two outs. Looks like he's playing tag on the playground. Wilson Ramos, 0 for 3 tonight. Hit the ball hard to right center. His middle at bat. That's a front door slider that stays inside. I'd say what Ryan's lucky there was no interference there as he walked across the plate with Montero throwing that ball to second base. That happens. It's not good for the Nats. Escobar had to go back. He would have had to go back to first. Another front door variety, and that one caught the corner. Oh, it would have been out. Well, you can save your closer on the road for a safe situation if it goes to extra innings. But he would probably be up and throwing if that Williams thought the Nats are going to go ahead here. Unable to get the low slider is Ramos. So it could be a, uh, the Nats score here could be a tag team safe. You can't throw Juice Stone out there every day and wear him out. Yeah. You need him in October or even September and he won't have anything left in the tank. Yeah, he's pitched and he has saved three of the last four games. Well, almost good job of not biting on that pitch low and away. Gets the count back even two and two. One measly single. <laughs> it's been a great game. Crowd into it. Here we go. Our first base open. You got a guy that knows how to drive in runs. 21 RBIs for Ramos on the year. Do you throw him a strike here? Or do you stay with that slider and hope he chases with you and take your chances with Tyler Moore? The batting average 429 on this count. I'd be less than aggressive right here if I was on going. He got a lot of the plate with that 86. Ramos out ahead. That was similar to the pitch on which Escobar singled to start the inning. And it's no knock to Tyler Moore on deck. You just have an everyday player in the batter's box that knows how to drive in runs and a guy that doesn't play every day in the on deck circle. And Escobar running. 
He's retired on the bases for the second time tonight. No real need to get to third base with two outs. That can't happen. You know, will be the first one to tell you that can't happen. He got picked off early in the game and now representing the go-ahead run gets thrown out. And the Nats hitters, because of a couple of base running mistakes by Yunel Escobar, have only been given 25 outs with which to work tonight. All right, the long ball tonight, solo shots. Swing easy when it's breezy at Wrigley Field, and that's what Dexter Fowler did in the first. And this one, come on. Bryce Harper says, thank you very much, Wrigley Field, 17th home run. That one in the seventh for Harper, and then Denard Span in the eighth. Hits it a visible Cubs fan. And then this one was just killed. Absolutely killed. That was the top, hit the top of the scoreboard in left center field. Wow. No wonder they haven't had any homers on Waveland Avenue this year. It's blocked. Left hander Matt Grace against the right hander Jorge Soler. Pitch, he hit it off the end of the bat. Crowd goes crazy. They groan as Tyler Moore catches it. Next up, the left hander Coglin. Okay, that was not a can of corn. I thought this one was on the street, but you see where it hits. That's a great pause on the replay off the end of the bat. Good extension by Solaire, but he missed the sweet spot. Everybody on their feet thought they were going home, and I have to admit, I thought he got it. Just based on the elements here tonight. Chris Coughlin 0 for 3. Cubs seeing Matt Grace for the first time. Did not appear in the game yesterday. And that fastball really ran and almost got the hitter. Tied ball game bottom of the ninth. Got to wear that one, don't you? Pitcher spot next. Jonathan Herrera, switch hitter. One pitch up the middle. Desmond can't get there. Cubs have the potential winning run aboard. And a switch hitter coming in who can handle the bat.
Matt Grace kind of out of position right there. It was right back at him if he was square up. To Coughlin, he catches that. Herrera, several years with the Rockies. Boston last year. Cup signed him as a minor league free agent last November. From the right side, he's four for ten as a pinch hitter from that side, one for four. Shows bunt, gets Escobar on the move. Took a strike. Long looks at the third base coach Gary Jones. One ball, one strike, one on, one out, bottom of the ninth. Let's see if the Nats throw over here just to see if anything's up. And Grace missing down. Well, this is the count you'd hit and run if you're Joe Madden. Two one count, one out if you're expecting a strike. You got a guy that can handle the bat. And Randy Norton, Matt Williams. Seeing if Cogman has any notions of going. Normally I'd say no, but Joe Madden likes to push the envelope, so. 2 1 pitch, runner holding. And a big cut by Herrera. 263 hitter who said eight career home runs. And a 2 2 bounce to Espinosa. Important to get the lead runner. No chance for a double play. And I have no idea why Ian Desmond tried to make that throw. They've given the Cubs a trading of places of the runners here. And that'll be Ian Desmond's 13th, uh, 13th error. No shot. No, it puts Herrera on second base and he's the winning run. And there's netting all along the Nats dugout if that ball hits the net. There's no way Herrera gets to second, but it went in the stairwell where you go in right in the middle. So now the Cubs have a chance to walk off the Nats right here, right now. Tony Tarasco telling the outfield to cheat in. They have to be able to throw out Herrera at the plate, and here we go. Addison Russell has two hits. A double last time. Ball one. Boy, that coupled with a base running play from the top of this inning. Two that could be a dagger. It's up to Matt Grace to get Russell. Fly ball right center. Span after it. Cubs win on a walk-off double. First career walk off for Addison Russell. And that's been playing so good. You just hate to give games away like that. And they gave this game away. Denard Spam would be playing no doubles right there. If Herrera was on first base. But because of the error as an outfield you have to cheat in to throw out the game winning run. That allowed that ball to get into the gap. There's no way that ball gets into the gap. If Herrera is on first base. You're playing deeper than deep with the winning run on first, with the winning run on second. You're cheating up. The Darn Span gave it a good effort, but it was tailing away the whole way. And with the base running mistake at the top of the ninth, the air in the bottom of the ninth, and a clutch hit, the Nats let one slip away, and they'll try to win their ninth series in a row here tomorrow.
Cubs draw even, setting up a Max Scherzer, John Lester rubber game tomorrow evening. That's only the fourth time the Nationals have lost a road game in their last 15. For FB and Dan, Bob Carpenter. 3 2 Cubs, they walk off the Nats. Join us tomorrow night, 7.30, Nats Extra. Then after that, Lester and Scherzer, the marquee matchup of the night in Major League Baseball. This has been a presentation to Masson. Stay tuned. Nats Extra postgame coming up next. And from Wrigley Field, where the home runs were raining, but a double won the game. So long for just a while.